Any moment? Hey, I think we're live. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Neil. How you going? Thanks for coming in again. No worries. I won't hit the red button this time, I promise. Oh, good. And destroy it. Good. Well, maybe we'll need it. <laughs> I don't know. The kill switch. The kill switch. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here live with Neil Hawker in the studio, uh, a belooza, mm -hmm. funkster, teacher, all of the above. Thanks for coming in again. No worries, my pleasure. What's been going on in your world? Lots of gigging? A little bit here and there, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Sort of, you know, running my own show as a band leader and yeah. starting to experience that. Excellent. <laughs> and uh, How's that going? It's like running a, an yeah, organisation. It is. It's got branding and everything, you know. It's um, need it's, a HR department. So. I, am, I am HR. <laughs> I am the manager. I am everything. So uh, it's going really well, actually. I'm I'm actually getting to the point now where I'm, um, I've got gigs starting to pop up at the few little venues I had my own, which is really nice. That's cool. And uh, played at the Rosebud uh, Sound Bar a few weeks ago. Oh, okay. um, to a fairly enthusiastic backpack crowd. So yes. It was an easy audience because they, yeah. they were already full of the boot by the time we got there. <laughs> In uh, true backpacker style. Yeah, it was a good gig. Excellent. and um, We did Newport Bowling Club last oh, yeah. weekend, which was very quiet, very, very quiet. I don't okay. know what was going on that night. I think footy was on or something. Yes. But, um, yeah. And then since I've seen you um, over on the pickpocket side of things, we've done the Jazz Lab. Yes. In uh, Brunswick, which is a really cool gig. It's the first time we'd played there. Great. And um, it was cool that they've, they've even asked us back. That's good. I think. Uh, oh. um, Craig, let me know. Okay. Yeah. Let us, let us know. Yeah. I actually went, uh, I managed to get out and I went and saw Travis Winter's uh, album launch. I missed it, unfortunately. No, we, we, mm. were, we missed you. Um, mm. I was very quick, though. I was yeah. like, Choo! And then, okay, got to go. But that I made up great. for it last night because I said to him, if I can't come to the launch, I'm buying a physical copy of your album. Wow. So I said, Very good. When, when are you playing next? And it was last night up in Faulkner at Musicland. Yes. Uh, up on uh, the top end of Sydney Road there. So he said, well, if you're going to come and buy the CD, bring a, bring a guitar. Yep. So I did a gig with him last night. Really? Um, wow. Yeah, it was cool. That's great, I, man. I mean, it's no prior preparation at all it's just like he goes oh my song's in the key of a go right. for it I was like, so i had to listen to the <laughs> album and very went, nice of you travis i couldn't think of anything i could add to his music mm -hmm. on the album so i thought yeah. well, in a live way i just go in gently and wait for the first four bars to go by before i decide what to do and uh, it turned I, out really cool it was really I cool i think i want you to have four or five beers before you come and play with me and then i'd feel a bit better about it <laughs> No, that, that only that guy's staggering over there is Neil. <laughs> so Ross Kavanagh is joined. Now, Neil, uh, I sent out the message during the week, mm. asked Neil the question, mm. and uh, Ross Kavanagh, who's on at the moment, actually did ask you a question. Mm. I have it written here. Oh, okay. Let's have a look. Let's now, if get I into can't, it. If I can't answer this, my credibility's bugging. <laughs> cut. We'll cut straight away. Yeah. Okay. I have the paper here. Question from Ross. Hi, Neil. Greetings, Ross. Greetings. Having recently watched an interview with Andy Summers from the police, oh, no, no idea. he dismissed the use of a capo. Mm. Do you think beginners should be taught cords up and down the neck without having to resort to a capo? I have changed my mind about this over the years. Okay. Because um, I had some really great teachers early on, and they taught me how to avoid the capo as a rule. So. Yes. Because basically the nut of your guitar is a capo. Yep. Right? And basically all the capo does is bring the nut forward. Yes. So your, your E-shaped chord becomes an open chord up here and C-sharp, whatever. And um, so I had some really great teachers that said, no, look, you can actually play things behind your, behind your pinky. You can play chords behind here so you can use your, your finger as the capo. So you learn yep. to play all these complicated chords. And I, yep. even to the point where I was hearing some music... Uh, when I was at university, I was transcribing all sorts of pop music that was um, actually recorded on capo, and uh, I took it to a company singers, and uh, I, was a, I was such a snob about it. I was like, I'm not using a capo. I'm going to play all these <laughs> and do the G shape, and I pulled it off. But the thing is, the capo has a has an effect. It's mm. an effect because, like, if you go and play all those chords in closed position, you lose that effect of the open string, right? As well, right. so. Um, I think maybe maybe good for I think if you put a capo up on seven or something and play yeah. your C's and whatever it's good for that um, 
uh, almost like a country. Yeah, country you can get like mandolinish effects yeah. up here and all that kind of stuff. It's a, lot, a really cool thing to play with. I don't really mm. gig with it. Yeah. Um, but I don't really have music that needs it. Yeah. But I will tell you, there was a capo on one song on my blues Ooh. album. What, which one was that? Uh, on Kings of the Night. Kings of the Night, South by East. Yes. Is the album. Plug, 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 plug. plug. Yes. Um, that have, song's in F. I have it here. Somewhere. Song's in F. And yes. it's a, a, and this is where I needed the capo. I, I right. actually play live, I don't need a capo, I just play the electric guitar. Show, show me. And um, maybe back here. Yep, cool. Okay. So instead of going. Okay. It's, I'm actually, the roof actually goes. So I'm actually playing that open yep. down there as well. Now I wanted a multi-tracker and acoustic guitar on there. Okay. And I've got some nice chords that go. Ooh. Thirteen chord. Oh yeah. Okay. All these, right? Yep. But they're all closed position. But the, right. the acoustic guitar to me sounds great in open. Okay. So I put a capo on the first fret. Yep. To record the acoustic track. So all of those thirteen chords could have at least one or two open strings okay. each. Okay. Yeah. And it sounds nice and folky. Folk um, and but yeah, a jazzy more. at the same time. So yeah, it's cool. it's an effect. It's uh, I used to be a snob about it, but I'm not really a snob about it. Yeah, now. yeah. Ross, there's your answer. I hope that worked out. Um, yeah, I just did an Andy Summers thing, I, uh, a quick video. But yeah, he does this sort of. Yeah, it's quite a chunky s stretch. Yeah, I can see you doing the you know whatever. Like yeah, that. I struggle to get that next next fret up. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a bit of a stretch. So. Um, Yep. Cool. Oh, yeah. Okay, we have another question. We have a few people on. Michael Webb has joined. Hello, Michael. Hey, Michael. Don't drop my guitar. Ah, this one? <laughs> yeah, he's the owner. I was like, I know that name. All right, should we plug the guitar now? We... Sure. Sure. That's a Gibson ES325 from 1972. Mm. I think this is legitimately before you were born this time. Yeah, five years that. before. Whew. There yeah. we go. There yeah. we go. So it's in spiffy condition. It is. Um, I'm not. So yeah, it's good. <laughs> but uh, you no, look it, wonderful. It sounds cool. It's like uh, like I was saying before that mini humbucker. Mm. It gives it a really really clear tone. It's um, it's almost telly or stratish. Yeah, in some it's amazing. You know? well, it's, it's it's part of that early '70s Gibson line of the the Les Paul recording, Les Paul Professional. They had a whole bunch of them with. Yeah. Some had the uh, the low impedance pickups. Mm -hmm. A lot of them had the controls, an exterior plate. So it's a very interesting machine. So is this still literally humbucker? Is there two coils inside yes. this? Yes. Yeah. So, so they're little mini, smaller coils. That's right. It's a mini humbucker. Mm, so. Okay. Cool. There you and, are. And uh, for the for the people in my um in my Facebook argument group that you may have yes. seen, the Fender versus yeah. Gibson yeah. argument group, bit of fun. Yes. Uh, reinforced uh, the loot. Look at that. <laughs> On the headstock there, which is usually the butt yeah. of all the Gibson jokes. But that one, that's going to fly. That's cool. Take it on the plane. Yeah, they had, um, <laughs> I mean, you know, a lot of the 70s stuff is, is actually pretty well constructed, but mm. um, there was a reason behind that sort of stuff. Okay, we have another question for you. Mm. Let's have a look. We've got 30,000 people on watching us today. Oh, my God. I think. Uh, from Travis Winters. Oh, here he is. Mm. Hey, Trav, good gig last night. Good gig, Travis. He lets it rip. Uh, I got questions for the hawk. Mm, he that he wrote a long you. one, didn't he? <laughs> I'll, I'll go through it. I'll go through it. So let's see how we go. I was interested in how he approaches expression in soloing and balancing that with a head full of music theory and technique. So the answer to that seems obvious to me in that the music theory and technique provide a foundation for expression, yet in the heat of battle, as it were. What does he do to let the solo bloom? Hmm. How do you chop? Hmm. Shopping? Where does he lurk outside the walls of blues and jazz norms to go looking for inspiration for licks and tricks? Hmm. How does he keep it fresh? Um, I don't know if I'm fresh all the time. It's, um, it's wow, that is a deep one, that one. I think the thing is, uh, the best time of your guitar playing life is when you first start playing it. And mm. Because you're on the you're on the up on the steepest learning curve you can mm. ever ever be on, mm. right? So you play like you don't care because you don't. Yeah, you know, and that's why I always find that y y young bands, yeah, they just 
they haven't they haven't played an open D chord that much, and it's, yeah. it's they'll just write stuff like that that uses a lot of those open chords. It sounds great. It and does. As you get older, you're like, yeah. oh man, I I don't know if I can use yeah. that anymore. And, yeah, you know, but, but you can. Yeah. Because it's all about what's appropriate for the song or the music as well. So mm. I think, like, back to improv, um, you go through a bit of a journey where you, like I say, you know, you're a young shredder, or you do whatever you do and you just play because you just love the way it sounds coming out of you and out of, the, out of your guitar. Mm. Um, and then some people might hit a wall with that and go, well, I want to know more. So that more is in theory mm. or in study. And then and then some people learn that in different ways as well. So like, so I think a lot of people who go through some sort of formal study take a while to kind of shake off the formality of it afterwards. Yeah. And I did. I did. Yeah. I played like a student, yeah. like an educated student for a while because I was thinking theoretically and, yeah. oh my God, here comes a 251, yeah. you know, and all that kind of stuff, which is, which is cool because it's, it's the trip you've got to go through before you stop using it. Yeah. You know? And then after a while, you just you, then you see an Eric Clapton video where he's just playing these big, yeah, uh, cadenza of Freddie King style, you know, out of time guitar licks, and you just mm. go, that just creates such a great sound. Mm. I just want to loosen up a bit and just mm. play whatever comes to mind. So know? when you're soloing now, are you are you thinking I'm just going to use my ear, or is the theory coming back to you and saying, oh wait a second, I really want to yeah. stick into this framework? Jazz Police. <laughs> jazz police. As yeah. soon as I start talking jazz, <laughs> they come to get me. You got a broken tail uh, light, sir. Look at with me. It, it actually comes down to like having a pretty pretty full trick bag, but knowing which ones to pull out at any given time, mm. and, uh, and not thinking theoretically all the time. Yeah. But it can pull you out of trouble. Yeah. And sometimes the theory can get you into trouble and get you into a very boring place. Yes. Where you're just going, you're playing this thing where it's like, I know this is correct, but it's not actually doing anything from the heart. Right. Or so, I, I, in pickpocket's probably a good example, you know, mm. in my parallel life when I play the pickpocket. Pickpocket, funk band. Yep. If you have not heard of this before, go and yep. check them out. And Great. there's a lot of, lot of uh, chord changes in that, and quite often I'll be given a fairly lengthy solo over like a, a, a progression that could be about 24 bars long mm. before it goes back to the beginning again, that yep. kind of thing. So. Um, Really, in that band, it's, it's, it depends on the song. Like some songs, you've got to approach it like, okay, I've got time to build this up. Yep. Right, because the bands come down and dynamic. I'm going to start creating a motif and develop the motif and go, and just write music as you're improvising. Yeah. I think that's probably a good way of putting it. Is you're okay. writing music. Yeah. And then when the the band starts to heat up, the solo starts to heat up. You might be able to pull some of your tricks out to create excitement. Um, and then. Above that, which is the ultimate goal that everyone's trying to get to, is the danger zone, the, the edge of the earth. Yeah. You know, where you're going, okay, I'm actually feeling like I can actually use my ear here yeah. and create some new stuff. Yeah. And you can either fall off mm -hmm. or just skirt around it and have a good time. But um, uh, having a good time is uh, hard to achieve a lot. But uh, that's, that is when I actually stop using theory. Yeah. Even though it's informed by theory, mm. it's... It's, it's the time that I know that I need to actually start creating music again and go, this is only going to peak if I do something that seems to come out of the ether a little yeah. bit as well. Yeah. So I don't really think about theory that much okay. at all. I think I know how to explain things in theory, yep. but um, soloing is a, is a language and it's many languages that come together like country music, blues, jazz, um, you know, my early rock days even come out today. Um, you know, in that kind of style of music, with pickpocket, for example, um, and your you, Def Leppard history. Oh man, I love Def Leppard. <laughs> I love Def Leppard. Are you going to see? Is, what are you going to see? Is it? I Ex saw something. Mr. Big, Extreme, and Extreme. And Mr. Big. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go and see that. Paul Gilbert. Never seen them. Yeah, and I'm a big Nuno fan too. Right. I yeah. Love, I love yeah. Nuno as a musician as a whole. Yeah. You know, like, crazy good. Really good. And. And it's no surprise. A handsome gentleman too. I know. Yeah, I know, poor bastard. But um, but it's no surprise that bands like that who who come up through the '80s shred thing. Yeah. A handful of them sort of rose above. Yeah. And I actually seriously yeah. believe because there was songwriting and there's blues in what they do. Absolutely. As well. It you know. always comes back to a good song, catchy melody, something yeah. you, can, you can put on the radio and uh, yeah. you know, sing along to. Yeah. It's, uh, and it's soulful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? I I love Holdsworth. I yeah. do, but 
I love the Beatles. I want to hear a good song. So, yeah. yep. speaking now that we've poo pooed theory a little bit, let's do some theory. All right. All right. <laughs> I have been watching your blue snacks mm -hmm. on YouTube. If you want a good uh, 60 second lesson and a few of them in a row, Go see Neil Hawker on Blues Guitar on Snacks. Blues Guitar Snacks yeah. YouTube. Yeah. If you're on Instagram, there's an in a hashtag Blues Guitar Snacks. If you look for that hashtag, you'll see all the lessons together in one one feed on Sweet. there as well. So right. that's Instagram explained. Now, I would say, and we've talked about this once or twice before. There's a, a condor of a bug flying around here, but uh, <laughs> go away. Uh, the the question I get asked more than anything in the world is how to take this classic, this is a soloing question, we'll talk about chords another time, yep. but how to take this basic minor pentatonic shape yep. and add something else into that. Now for yep. you, you're going to be thinking in a blues context, so let's stick with that. Yeah, stick with the blues, yeah. Okay. Always stick with the blues. Yeah. Always stick with the blues. So, yeah. so we're going to do it in an A, and uh, it's just your standard A minor pentatonic shape, and my blues chord can be yep. an, an A7, Right? Yep. Yeah. Or a shuffle or whatever you want to do over that. It might be the, yeah, might be a volume setting there somewhere. Uh, one of them. I don't know yeah. what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I could be too loud. I'll turn down a bit. Okay. So I was watching your, your uh, video and you said, okay, I'm going to add the six in. Yep. I'm going to add the nine, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Okay. So just for people, who don't understand what that means, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? You're talking about numbers in the scale. Yep. Okay. Yep. And when you put an F sharp, mm -hmm. so if I'm playing my- In the key of A, in, in this context. Yeah, yep. okay. Yep. You're thinking um, A minor in the, in the key of G, because that would, is that, that's the sixth note if I follow that scale. If I go A, uh, it's the sixth note in the key of A, so the F sharp. Key of A major. F sharp. A. Oh, A major. A. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay, because okay. whenever you're talking about dominant seventh chords, when you've got a major third in there, yep. I'm always talking from a point of view of a major, a, a major as, okay. the, as the reference point. Okay. Yeah, so, cool. Okay. Um, so, because you know, really, the if, if anyone knows the nerdy Mixolydian mode, it's just a major scale where you don't play the second last note like that, you play it like that. Right, so that's what it comes down to. But um, with adding these six and nines, yep. so you know you could happily play your pentatonic. Right, which I could do that. I could do that for ages because I'm not adding any fancy notes or anything like that. But I know yep. how to actually. I've listened to enough players who know what to do with those five notes right. to make it interesting. Okay. You know? But if you want to add more interest, yeah, there are other notes you can add to the minor pentatonic scale. Your boxy one. Yeah. So right. what are we? So what are we? So we take an A seven. Yep. So what do you can add? Happen? The ninth. Now the ninth is literally up the major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. It's a serve. Which is, the, is a B note on, B. The, on the on yeah. the G string on the fourth fret. Right. right. Or up an octave more commonly. Right. Right. Okay. So I'll be more likely to use this one, right? So. Okay. That's sweet. Right. And it sounds that. a bit sweet, a bit more country like, right? And you're getting into more of that BB King territory kind of thing. Okay. So it's basically just adding your. So instead of having. You've got. Yeah. So that, that's with all the notes added. Right. In there, all the B notes. But what also sounds great is the sixth as well, which is on the. Yes. On so the seventh that's fret on the F B sharp. string. Yep, your F sharp. But let's not talk about notes because if we take it down to the key of G, it's. It's here, it's here in the key of F. It's really important to kind of take okay. it in, into other. But like for the sake of A, yep. it's an F sharp. Okay. Seventh fret. B string. Yeah, always so the, always the dominant seventh chord. Always the dominant. Just for this, just yep. for this, because yep. um, I, I actually play most of my blues stuff is in a dominant key. Right. Okay. So it's got that major third. Yep. Yeah, so your ninth. Yep. And 
then there's your sixth. So what we've got now, we used to have a five note scale. Now we've added the six and the nine. We've got a seven note scale. So let's just let's just talk about that in terms for tab folks. Yep. Okay, so you're adding, so you're taking that basic shape mm -hmm. and you're yep. adding on the second string, fret mm -hmm. uh, seven. Yep. There's your F sharp. And fret seven on the E string, on the bottom string. That's it. Okay. Okay. So normally it would be da 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 da. And are you yeah. still are you still keeping these ones in? Yeah, I'll mix the two. Right. So that's what makes it. That's what actually makes it interesting in the end when you combine okay. the kind of stronger, tougher sound of the minor third. Okay. And the. Are they your favourite things to add in? Pretty much. Okay, sweet. Pretty much. Um, so you got it right there. You're adding in yep. on the seventh fret, bottom E string, yep. seventh fret B string. Yep. There's also one here. And then yep. you recommend just going around and finding those those notes. Yeah, and when you move it to other keys, they're always going to be in the same position in relation to the right. root note, right? So in, in A, there's your F sharp over from the root right. note, the root note to the F to the sixth. Right. Right. I mean, of course, take it down a fret in G. It's there. Yep. F, it's there. So it doesn't matter what key you're playing, you should be able to right. actually. But back to A. Um, and other people actually achieve this by playing the same pentatonic shape down a few frets to get the major pentatonic. You know, like. Oh, I see. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And then there's. Which is a bit more country sound, but. Yeah. This is a way of approaching it more musically than that because yep. this is very this is very physical. You know, you're yep. going okay. If I go, it's more bluesy. If I go over the same chord, it's going to sound a bit more countryish, right? Right. Yeah. But I wouldn't be. I don't like looking at it that way all the time because yep. it means I'm always thinking, oh, okay, I'm going to play this sort of really tough sounding blues stuff. For a sweeter sound, I'm gonna to have to move my whole hand down. Yeah, yeah. it's not yeah. smooth, but here, if I just know where these notes are, yeah. So it actually keeps it all within the same area. Yep. And I'm not sort of jumping around the neck and sort of ruining the flow of my improvisation. So it almost looks like an an A. Dorian scale, but I want to stay away from sort stay of that. Away from so that. <laughs> it gets too confusing. Well, the whole but... point of me doing these lessons on at Blues Guitar Snacks is to, yep. is people get quite obsessed about the Mixolydian mode, yep. right? Which, yep. um, which if you're already lost by this point by me just saying that, don't worry because mm. again, I'd like to for the blues to add more color to the blues, you just got to know what notes to add, and you'll end up with more notes than that the the mixolydian mode in the yes. end because every scale is a is a seven to eight note scale with the octave included you know? and mixolydian is right right but so you've either got a g or a g sharp but that's thinking in a scale away yeah and it's not yeah. to me it's not very bluesy i mean every so often yeah. it's good to do that you know because guys like robin four will go What are you playing then? So that's Mixolydian mode. Right. But you can hear how it sounds a little bit more scalar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then. Yeah. It sounds, yeah. I'm playing the same notes thing. from it, but yeah. I'm not thinking of it in a scalar way. You right. know, I'm just thinking of it, okay, this is an extra note that makes it sound cool. It's very nice. Yeah, and it's it's it suits the style, you know. Okay. Like it's it's blue. It's still the blues at the end of the day, but it's just got more color in it. So those that six and nine, and mix it up six with your nine. Yep. Yeah. So I'm either gonna go. I'm gonna be real basic. Six and nine. We're in tablature. Eight yep. five eight five eight five eight five. All right. Yep. Seven five seven five seven five seven five. 
That's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. All right. 8505. Yeah. Okay. That's in the key of A. That's very yeah. good. Yeah. That's very cool. So take your A minor pentatonic scale, the basic one, mm -hmm. play all the different shapes, mm -hmm. add in the sixth. The sixth, which is the F sharp. The F sharp. And the B. Yeah. The nine. So find where they are. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's kind of cool. To be clear, it's probably better off over a major or a dominant chord, like a seventh chord. Right. Um, Is it going to work over yeah. a shuffle? You make the change mm. to the four, what do you do then? Um, Is it the I same? I still do the same stuff. Right, so yeah. try that. So I'll play that shuffle again in A and then I'll change to the four. Yep. So you're just gonna take it take it up? Yep. I should let people know that I'm also adding the third note to match the chord as right. well. In over the one chord. So you've added so to your minor pentatonic you've added uh, fret seven, fret seven, fret six. Fret six. Okay. Yeah. Well I'll just play a shuffle in A. I'll yep. switch to the D, and then you can just take the same up, up to D. You can. Yeah, you, you can. Can you try and play everything in the same position? Well, let me try it. Okay. All right. Let me, let, me, let me actually try jumping from A position to D position. Okay. All right. See how that sounds. See, see if I sound great back. or if I sound naff. <laughs> I'll um, go great. We'll see. Ready? <laughs> three. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Um, yeah, it turns out it does work. It's not, yeah, it's not naff okay. at all. Okay. So you can actually because that shuffle, that A shuffle's got the got the F sharp in it anyway, right? So there you go. You're doing it anyway. If you're uh, if you're already playing entry, entry level basic blues, I guarantee you're already playing the F sharp in your rhythms. That's you that's know, sweet. It's already there. Okay. All yeah. right. Cool. Because I wanted to ask you about the change, but essentially you're just taking the same idea mm -hmm. and moving it with the chord. Yeah, I can. Okay. Okay. And it depends if 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 I know. So you so really when when you think of blues, mm. you're playing the changes because a lot, cause a lot of guys it. come in and they're like, yeah. you know what, I'm just going to play a blues scale. That's cool too. Over the lot. Yeah, that's cool too. Yeah. Um, but for me to keep it more interesting for myself and maybe for yeah. the occasional listener, yeah, is is to try and follow the changes a bit more because you're telling the story. Yeah. Are you are you changes. using the blue note at all? Yeah. Yeah, you use it a lot. Uh, I don't use it when I move up to D. Yeah, um, yeah. Because you end up with a wrong note. Right. But, um, definitely. So okay. And then you change it to the D. Yeah, oh, I can still use it. So you're using an A blues scale over the D. Yep. Over all three chords. Not a, Okay, okay. But you can also use the D blues scale over the D as well. Right. So okay. you, you can, you just got to be careful with it. You know, like yeah. sometimes um, it just, it sounds a little bit too literal and a little bit too deliberate. Yep. In, yep. A, in a way it's like, oh, he's, but, but that's cool if you do, because yep. eventually you're going to sound more smooth at it. You know, yep. like everybody starts with going. <laughs> And over the D chord, and then back over A. I mean, that's very literal because yep. you kind of hear me playing the same yeah, sort yeah. of idea from A up in D. Yeah, yeah. But I can definitely hear you making the change. But yeah. if you want to be cool about it, yeah, you can be a bit more subtle, you know. Okay. Five. 
So you can see how I kind of I actually played all three changes in the one position there because yeah. I knew yeah. I knew that I'm picking notes out of each chord to add to the scale as well. Yeah. So yeah. you know that a a G sharp up on the ninth fret yeah. on the B string, right? Is not part of the key of um, A in the blues generally because it's a major no. seven, you know. Yeah, it's got that sound yeah, about yeah. it, you know. It's very dissonant. But when you go to the E seven chord, are you using the same trick down the tone when you go? Yeah. So it's so you can just again don't be um, kind of overwhelmed by. Oh, I've got to play all the changes. You know? yep. But it's more like, I want to be as free as possible and play all my favourite blues stuff, but occasionally just yep. go, oh, we're, in the, we're over the five chord now. Okay. We're over the E, you know. You, otherwise, you end up being a, a, a sort of, you'll sound student-y. Yeah, you know? yeah, so, yeah. Yep. Yep. I think last time you were here, we got into the diminished scale. I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> we'll no. stick. I think that's an excellent trick, though. That's fantastic. Yep. So, really, you're just taking that, a combination of major pentatonic and minor pentatonic. Yeah. Do you think of it that way, or? Yeah, I, that's a good way to start. Like I say, okay. it's a good way to start. But again, once you get fluent with these, those two scales all over the neck, you can yep. combine them at will in one okay. position. Okay. You know? So it'll be under your fingers once you get used to doing it. Okay. Yeah. So just to sum up, we're taking all we're doing is taking a blues and A. If you don't know a blues and A, it's A seven, a D. Back to A and an E, chord one, four, five. Yep. We're taking that minor pentatonic shape that most people have learnt, mm -hmm. and we're adding two extra notes to it, a yep. B and an F sharp. And then you take the worst case scenario, mm -hmm. let's call it maybe, you take the same shape, which I'm starting on an A here, yep. and for the chord change, move it up to... Uh, let's try and stay away from that. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I say, stick to what you know with the A minor pentatonic everywhere, right. all over the neck. Yep. I would actually, first thing I would do is if you're only not on one position, get the note all over the neck. Yep. So if you do find yourself up here in the, key, in the chord changes to D, yep. I can play okay. the third of D. Nice. Yeah. And if you go up to E. Back to D. Back to A. Okay. So it's yeah, I mean again it's it's coming from very simple language. Like it's yeah. Like the thing is too, like I, I say I'm a big fan of Robin Ford and I it's probably my favourite guitarist because he's yeah. so um he can be very sophisticated in a very down home context. Right. Um, right. but at the same time, like I I'm listening to guys like Jimmy Vaughan and stuff yeah. like that and yeah. going well I love that first record the first Thunderbirds so records. good and, and and the thing is too the stuff that he's doing in there you're going oh it's so simple and it's kind of whatever but mm. when you listen to what he's doing you go okay it's mostly especially in the Thunderbirds because it's a bit more 50s rock and roll mm. kind of thing it's it's just your boxy pentatonic going on with yeah. a few and, it, and there's, there's some more Texan kind of the sixths and the nines are in there too you know? so so over what i was just playing there which was just a straight blues in a yeah when i made the change to the d and the e mm. and you were saying learn your learn this minor pentatonic shape in all the different positions over the neck yeah then think about adding the extra notes with the chord change as opposed to yeah taking which is almost another shape. separate lesson because right. if you go to blues guitar snacks on um, YouTube? youtube you'll see me go through how to outline the chord changes yes so, and it's just basically still, again, I'm just using, you know, Jimmy Vaughan's language. And then we go to the D. But adding little notes that tell you the thirds yep. in the chords that tell you uh, whereabouts in the progression we are. Okay. Uh, but again, it's, uh, that's probably another lesson. Cool. Uh, yeah. Well, look, I'm going to say thank you, Neil. No Amazing. Worries. No worries. It's a customary handshake yes. for appearing on the curls. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Neil Hawker, if you have a question for Neil, you can get him on Facebook and YouTube and around the traps. Yeah, Instagram. He's playing Instagram as well. Are you, you, so you're doing your blue snacks still on Instagram or straight to YouTube now? They, they, go, to, they go to Instagram first, and then when yeah. I get time to get them all together and put them on YouTube all in one load in one night. 
transfer them across. But if you're not on it's, Instagram, there's already 21 lessons on YouTube right now. So there's, cool. there's a whopping 21 minutes worth of lessons on there. That's awesome. Yeah. If you want to uh, learn about blues guitar, this, this man can help you a lot. You got some gigs coming up? Yeah. Can I think of them? Yes. <laughs> I'll have a swig of beer. Yeah, We're sponsored so, by uh, uh, Mountain Goat today. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mountain Goat. Thank you, it's fantastic. I've got... Um, well, mm, I've got... Tasty beverage. Oh, well, yes. Yeah, so I've got a... Coming up in May, June. I check my Facebook for dates because I can't remember off the top, off the top of my head. Okay. But coming up is um, playing at 303 in Northcote as a Hammond trio with my organist right. Felix Elliott. This is your new thing. So I'll still be playing the blues, yeah. um, but I might be adding a few more things to the repertoire that suit that kind of music. It would be kind of fun. Does it get any better than guitar and Hammond, Neil? Come on. Uh, um, no, because Craig's probably watching this video. Uh, um, apart from when Craig's involved. Yeah, when bass players are watching the video, there's nothing like bass. Um, <laughs> love bass. I love bass. No, it's, it's really cool. Like, uh, guys like uh, Matt Schofield, um, right. I think Great. he's actually done a whole album with a, with a Hammond organist. Really? That kind oh, of thing. Right. Oh, and you I write to, differently for it. Yeah, yeah. They, they do a slightly different style of blues for that. It's yeah. a little bit more, I guess, you're, up, uptown. You're a Schofield you know? fan? Love Schofield. Bo both Schofields? I love all three, four, five different types of Schofield. Um, but um, yeah, so I'm doing Hammond Combo at 303 coming up. That's that's a Hammond night called Kicking the Bee at 303. They get different right. bands in. Yep. Because I think there's a permanent B3 sitting in there. Right. Um, Sweet. Although I told Felix about the B3 and he goes, oh, that B3, man, it's famous around town. It's got sticky notes. And <laughs> I said, well, just don't play those, you know. So, okay. Um, then I've got. Um, Coming up soon, I'll be doing the Hume Blues Club up at Coburg. Bowling. Yeah, yeah. I follow oh. follow the guys on Instagram. Yeah, Vice I'm going to be taking the whole. Hello, of... Hume Blues Club. Yeah, hey Barry. Um, hello, American food cooks. Mm. You guys are the best. Yummy. Um, I'll be taking up the full South by East lineup up there with the horns. Wow. So I'm calling that uh, big, Neil, Neil Walker band. and the Hurricane Horns. <laughs> nice. Uh, so that's a different format. And then cool. my core band, my four or five piece, whoever's available, uh, will be doing the MBAS as well. We'll be doing probably about three or four weeks later, we'll be playing okay. out at Flemington Bowling right. Club. So it's the Melbourne Bowling Club tour. Um, mm, the Blues that. Association out there. The guys have been in the shop before. Hello, folks. Yeah. yeah. And, okay. Yeah, and then this pickpocket's awesome. got a, um, I should let the cat out of the bag. I'm just going to do it anyway. There's an EP launch coming up very soon at the Ooh. Paris Cat in Ooh. the city for that's, Pickpocket. There's new music, classy. which I was helping Craig with this morning. I was recording some guitar very tracks. Nice. Neil Hawker and Pickpocket on Spotify. Yeah, and okay. also, also yeah. available um, for, for money as well if you want to make a purchase. You know. If you would like to purchase a CD, Yep. Please contact Neil. Yep. Neil, thanks so much. That was awesome. No worries. Hope to have you back at some point. Uh, if you have questions, you can send them through. But that's all for us today. Um, you can find Neil at all the above mentioned spots. Thanks, buddy. No thanks, worries. everyone. Oh, Michael Ray's on. Ingrid, Emma, a few people. Hi, guys. We'll see you later. Have a good afternoon. See ya. Dun, dun, dun.